Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers, and this is my Flashpoint Speedlight. In this video, I'm going to have a look at the zoom function on the Speedlight. What does it do? Does it even do anything? Well, spoiler alert, yes it does. And to find out what, you need to click on the subscribe button. Actually, you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway, but if you can, that's a good thing. So the zoom button, when I click it and I turn the dial, it changes the number, it makes a noise. But what's it actually doing? Well, to find that out, we need to set a light up. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is going to be the model for this shoot. And I'm going to start with the whole reason that the zoom function exists on a speed light. And it's for a very rare thing for me, on camera flash. Yep, you won't see this too often on my videos. So I've got my flash on my camera. It's in automatic TTL mode. It's a dedicated flash, which means if I come and take a picture of Sophie at the long end, which for this lens is 100 millimeter, 200 millimeter equivalent of a full frame camera, I get a picture that is, well, correctly exposed. The flash does a great job and gives really even illumination. However, if I zoom out to 12 millimeters, the other end of my lens, much wider shot, magically the flash can also give me light that spreads wide enough to cover that lens as well. So the whole idea with the zoom function is whatever focal length you use, your flash will adjust the spread of light so you get even illumination from one corner to the opposite. It's really very clever and ultimately not very interesting. So let's see if we can take that and make it a bit more creative. This is more like it. I've got the speed light off camera. Off camera flash gives much more dramatic results and it's in a very dramatic position. Off to the side, so I'm gonna get a beam of light coming down onto Sophie, lighting the background. I want to try this at different zoom settings on the speed light, but there is a little bit of a problem with that because to change the zoom, I need to reach up here where I can't quite reach and some, press some buttons that I definitely can't see. However, some transmitters, for example, this Flashpoint one I've got here, will allow you to adjust the zoom for your speed light remotely, directly from the transmitter. There is a slight gotcha for my particular setup because although my flash is set for Olympus zoom crop factor, my transmitter, it is in 35 millimeter equivalent. So I'll stick to what the transmitter says, but just watch out for that one. So let's start by taking a picture wide, 24 millimeters, the wide end of this. Here we go, Sophie. And that gives quite a great little beam of light coming down, very dramatic. Yeah, I like that. But will I like it more if I change the zoom? Well, let's find out. So I'm on 24 millimeters now. I'm gonna change it to 50 millimeters. I can hear the speed light change. And when I press the shutter, yeah, that gives a very different beam. There's a slight difference in the pattern of light, but you'll notice that it's also much more constricted as well. So let's go the whole way, max it out, 200 millimeters. And that gives a really thin beam of light compared to where we started. The beam of light may be different in each shot, but the shadow it makes is exactly the same. It doesn't matter what zoom setting you have on the speed light, you're always gonna get the same hardness of shadow. The spread of light isn't the only thing that changes when you adjust the zoom of your speed light. You also change the amount of light that reaches your subject. Let me show you how that works. So Sophie is fully trained in the use of a flash meter. So let's just see what we get. I've got my flash set to 200 millimeter maximum zoom and our exposure is? 5.69. 5.6.9, very nearly F8. Then if I go to the opposite end, I'm gonna take it down to its widest angle. 24 millimeters, and do exactly the same again. Here we go. 4.07. 4.07, we lost over a stop of light by changing the zoom. Or you could say we've gained a stop of light by zooming in. Think of it like this. When we zoom the speed light in, we're taking the same amount of power and squeezing it into a smaller space, which means our flash becomes a lot more efficient. More light reaches our subject. So you might think, why not just leave your zoom setting to maximum to get the maximum efficiency from your speed light? And that might be a good idea, but there are a couple of reasons why that wouldn't be such a good idea. 
For example, if you're using an umbrella, you might want to get a big spread of light to maximize the use of your umbrella, and a wide angle zoom is definitely the way to go for that. Speaking of umbrellas, I've got a large umbrella here with a second speed light in it, and of course the speed light is set to its wide zoom setting, and this is just going to put a little bit of fill light onto the shadow side of Sophie. Other than that, everything is going to be basically the same. We'll move this light around, we'll try some different zoom settings. Sophie, are you ready? Okay, let's take some pictures like this. Here we go. Fantastic. I went with this moody monochrome look because it looks really good with the lighting but the right hand side doesn't really work because well I never really finished that side of my studio. So what I'm going to do is to copy the left side and put it on the right side and that means I'll start with a selection where I'll just drag out a rectangular marquee over an area I want to copy, go to edit and copy, back to edit and paste and then back to edit a third time and choose transform flip horizontal. Then I just get the move tool and drag it across and roughly position it where I think it should go on the right hand side. To blend the two sides together I'm going to come up to the layer then down to layer mask and I put a reveal all layer mask in there. That's a, a white layer mask which means I need a paintbrush that's the opposite colour which is black and then all I need to do is make sure my brush is nice and soft and feathered and not too big and then just paint black over that area and black will cut a hole through the mask revealing the original image below and give me a perfect blend except of course where it doesn't and where it doesn't swap back to white paint it in and that will hide the mistake that you've just made and there you go it's as simple as that there's my final picture completed the zoom function on a speed light may have been originally designed for on-camera flash but Getting your flash off camera is way more exciting and the zoom function is still relevant and a hugely creative tool once you master the basics. Now, if you've got any questions or you've enjoyed this video, just leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here in Adorama TV. And of course, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.